Square's founder Jack once said, it's really complex to make something simple. And indeed, uh, accepting credit card payments in the simplest way possible requires engineers like myself to absorb a great deal of complexity behind the scenes. I'm going to tell you a story about uh, the algorithms behind one small part of Square. You might have noticed that the numbers on your credit card aren't exactly random. In, in fact, the first few digits identify the card brand or the network, the next few identify the issuing bank. And if your bank reissues you another card, those numbers will typically stay the same. We use this information in a few ways. First of all, we use it to show the brand uh, in Square's UI. Second of all, we use it to uh, route transactions to the right network on the back end. Third, we use it to uh, maybe even change the risk profiles based on what we know about the issuers. So given that we have this list of credit card number prefixes that map to either like the issuer and the brand, um, how do we take a credit card number and find the prefix that matches that brand? It sounds simple, right? Well, our first implementation was indeed simple. We coded it by hand. Um, it basically just iterated through the list of these prefixes one by one until it found one uh, that matched it. And then it returned whatever the, the, the brand was. And there's a couple problems with this. <laughs> you don't have to read that code. That is the actual code, though. There's a couple problems with this. One, it combines the configuration with the logic. So if you change the con configuration by adding another mapping, for example, you run a really high risk of breaking the logic. Second, iterating through the prefixes one by one isn't the most efficient thing possible. So as you add more and more prefixes, it's going to take longer and longer to find the prefix that matches a given card number. So how did we fix this? Uh, the first thing that I did was I sorted these prefixes in dictionary order. So what you'll find is when you do this, um, if we were to sort a credit card number into this list, the element that comes right before that credit card number in sort order is going to be the prefix that matches it. So when we want to uh, find the prefix that matches a given credit card number, it's very simple. All we do is we use something called a binary search. Uh, we binary search within this list to find out where the credit card number would go. We look at the preceding entry, and then we see if that prefix matches the credit card number. And if it does, we return the brand. So the way a binary search works is it splits the list in two over and over and over again recursively. Um, this means that the number of comparisons we're going to make is uh, what you call like the logarithm of the total number of prefixes. So, for example, say we had 1,000 prefixes in our data that we were going to match against, that would mean uh, in our earlier algorithm, we would have had to do 1,000 comparisons in the worst case. Whereas with this algorithm, since it's logarithmic, we would only have to do 10 comparisons. That makes it two orders of magnitude faster. It's, it's quite a bit better, right? So, this worked great for uh, simple prefixes. The actual code was really simple. It only required like a few lines of code because we reused existing libraries, but it didn't work so well for ranges of prefixes, which can get into the hundreds of uh, prefixes. And uh, the reason is the search was fast, but creating all these prefixes up front was slow and it took up a lot of memory. So to solve this problem, we turned to one of my idols, Edward Fredkin. Edward Fredkin's a really cool guy. He was one of the first computer science professors at MIT, even though he didn't have a bachelor's degree himself. He was the inspiration for Stephen Falcon in War Games. And in addition to that, he also created this great data structure in 1960 called a tri. Now, the way a tri works is it's a special kind of tree where it breaks the keys or the prefixes, in this case, out across the nodes. So uh, one digit per node. So to use a tri, you take the credit card number, you start at the root of the tri, uh, you match the first digit in the credit card number against the, uh, you find the child node that corresponds to that, and then you find the grandchild node that corresponds to the second digit in the credit card number, and then so on until you have a match. Now, the really cool thing about this is one, this is what we call a constant time algorithm. That is, no matter how many prefixes we throw at this, it's always going to run at the same speed. And that's really cool. Um, second, it also uh, handles those ranges of prefixes in a really natural way in contrast to the binary search. Um, this worked really great on the server and even in mobile devices, but in a truly embedded system like Square's card reader, it didn't work so great. You see, Square's card reader also has to do this brand identification so they can tell the app what the brand is because the app never has access to the unencrypted card number, so it can't do it for itself. Now, the problem here is while the card reader has a little CPU in it, and while it can fit more code, it only has 256 bytes of RAM total. That's like uh, a couple thousand bits, ones and zeros of information. And it's already using that to, one, decode the magnetic stripe, two, encrypt, and then three, to communicate that. So there's really no room left. So what do we do? Um, do we 
uh, write a specialized, optimized implementation just for the card reader, that'd be kind of unfortunate, I think. Um, is there any way we could like reuse this code? And after some thought, I, we came up with what I think is a really clever hack. We took that try in the existing configuration, and from that, we generated code that effectively uh, mapped the try to a series of nested switch statements. So the first switch would map the first character, and then the second switch would match the next character. And the really cool thing about this is, in contrast to the try, which took up a lot of memory, this ran at the same speed, or maybe even a little faster, and it takes up zero RAM. So I, th I thought that was really cool. So I told this story because I think it's really emblematic of Square's culture. You know, it's like, we always question assumptions, we like to push the envelope and really advance the science, and we like to take that same uh, attention to detail and polish that you see in our products and apply it to code. And we're hiring. <laughs>